All right, I'm out for a ride on a product that I really didn't want to try and use, but now that I've tried it, <laughs> I don't want to ride without it. Oh my goodness, when will I learn? Old dogs and new tricks. We're talking about the Redshift Shock Stop Suspension Seat Post. Now I did a video previous to this talking about my reasons why I thought it was time to try one of these. And so I'll put that up and link that at the end and you can uh, watch that before or after this as you like. But basically I was finding that as the miles piled up on me and the rides got longer and harder and all the gravel bike riding I've been doing, I was really finding I was taking or at least I was noticing all those bump impacts more and more and more all those little micro bumps and macro bumps that can come up through the saddle when you're riding a, a rigid bike which like this gravel bike and i think it was getting to the point where i didn't want to damage myself long term i want to do this for a long time for a lot of years still and if i can do that injury free and pain free now notice i didn't say suffering free we're always going to suffer but pain free if i can make that better well, then I should. Now, why Redshift? Well, I've used their products in the past. You know, I am a huge fan of their stem, their shock stop stem on gravel bikes. I really don't ride a gravel bike without having a shock stop stem on it. I knew those guys. They're great folks. I'd had great luck with their product. There are other products on the market um, that do the job of a suspension seat post, but uh, I really had a lot of faith in Redshift. I like the way the product looks. I've never heard a bad thing said about it, reliability wise. And I thought, yeah, let's look at Redshift. But the question was, which seat post should I get? Because there are two of them. Redshift makes the standard version and they make the pro version. Now the pro version, it's lighter by a quarter pound compared to the regular version. It has less travel, 20 millimeters of potential travel versus 35 millimeters of potential travel for the standard post. It's also less adjustable. It does come with one little elastomer to make the post stiffer, but the standard version is very adjustable, comes with an accessory spring you can add, and it has an adjustability to the bottom for spring preload. So there's quite a difference between the two, and the pro version is $70 more compared to the standard version as of the time of this video. So Redshift was good enough to send me one of each, no charge, so I could evaluate, see which one I thought I wanted to use for the gravel bike, what the differences were, and pass that information on to you. That is what I'm going to do today. I started off using the Pro Post. Now I used it pretty much as it came out of the box. It does have, as I said, uh, a little bit of adjustability if you're a heavier rider. It comes with a little heavier elastomer that you can add. And when you look at the suggested weight chart for Redshift, what they say a rider should weigh before he maybe moves that little bit heavier spring, I'm kind of right on the edge. I'm right in the middle at about 173 pounds. So I wasn't sure how it was going to go. But I actually found the, the uh, out of the box setting for the Pro Post to be actually really ideal. I get very little sag when I sit on it. I don't get any unnecessary cycling or bouncing when I'm pedaling. No, it's actually been very, very good just as it was. So I never needed to try that other elastomer, but if I was maybe 190 pounds, etc., that might have been the way to go. Now, once I had the Pro Post on my Turner Cyclosis gravel bike, I pedaled out for this ride that was kind of the inspiration for actually getting the post in a way. It's kind of a, a kind of a rough day. It's a three and a half hour loop. It's got about eight miles of dirt climbing, 3,000 feet of gain. And it's just got rain ruts and rocks and it's just one of those places where you just sit and grind away and you know it kind of takes its toll on your body just those thump thump thump. You know every time you cross a rain rut you either take the big hit or you kind of soft pedal raise up out of the saddle. You know what I'm saying? Well that takes energy. And it's not as efficient if you were just to be able to sit and keep pedaling. 
So what I was curious to see was how much of a difference the redshift seat post made for that ride, because that was kind of my litmus test. Well, it was amazing actually. I was able to sit and pedal and really not really stop pedaling through any of the uh, of the ruts and the, the bumps and whatnot on that ride. Now, I didn't just sit and just dead weight everything like you could maybe with a full suspension mountain bike. It wasn't like that. I still would give myself a little grace to somewhat lift the weight on the saddle, but only on the biggest hits. Most of it, I just sat and pedaled and spun efficiently and smoothly and quietly. So by the time I was finished with that ride, I was fresher than I didn't be ever been on that ride on the gravel bike. I didn't have any pain in my back. My muscles and all of that felt better. And my legs even felt fresher because I felt like I wasn't giving up any energy trying to make up for all those bumps and climbing over them. It was a noticeable improvement. So after that, it was time to put on the standard post. Now the standard post, as I said, it's a quarter pound heavier than the pro post. And the difference there is in the hardware and the construction between the two posts. It does come with more adjustability. On the bottom of it, you have a little spring preload adjustment. It also comes with an accessory spring in the kit that you can add into the spring stack uh, coil spring to make up for an even heavier rider. So the standard is a quarter pound heavier and has quite a bit more adjustability to it. And as I said before, it is less expensive. Did I notice a great difference between the two posts when I rode them? No, not really. I would say the most noticeable difference was it felt like the standard post with the three and a, um, 35 millimeters of travel, potentially. It felt like it had a wider sweet spot in which to operate. In other words, as I was pedaling it and I had adjusted it with the, with the uh, I left the springs as it came out of the box, but I did put some spring preload in it, as you can see in the picture here. I think I did about a turn and a half from what it came out of the box and just kind of guessed and actually worked out actually just quite well, but you can adjust it to your heart's content. Once I got that set to where I felt like it wasn't too soft or too saggy and um, felt good to me, that's where I left it. So the biggest difference, as I was saying, felt like on, uh, on bumpy rides that the standard post with its increased travel had more range to operate from. So it felt just overall smoother throughout the day. Sometimes the pro post, when you hit a bigger, deeper bump and you're, you don't, um, you know, you're just kind of dead weight it more than you maybe you should, I would get a little bit of a pop back from it where it kind of bounces me up just slightly. It's, you know, it's not launching me or anything, but you could feel it. And I think it was probably running toward the edge of its travel and the spring rates increasing. On the standard post, it gave me a lot more grace that way. Now that said, both of them are really quite amazing. I mean, as I ride it, I, I, I'm continually impressed with just basically how much more relaxed I am during the ride and how much fresher I am at the end of rougher rides. If I was riding champagne gravel where I'm on smooth, smooth dirt roads, you know, this probably wouldn't be something I would need to consider. That is not where I ride. Now, did I notice the extra weight? Well, it's about a half a pound weight gain from the seat post I was using to the standard post. I was using that Linsky titanium rigid post. It's pretty light. You might be using a heavier seat post than that if it came on a reasonably inexpensive bike, aluminum seat post, they're not really all that light. But did I notice the weight? Nah, I really didn't. And it's not likely that anybody else would either, honestly. But if you're really counting grams, well, then there's the pro post option. Now there are other C posts out on the market, aren't there? Cane Creek EE post. You can get that with a carbon fiber uh, C post uh, tube to it. I think that's the lightest one I know of. Probably pretty comparable, but uh, you know, I haven't used it. I'm sure it's a great product. I've heard some issues with pivots and things over time squeaking. I don't know, I've never heard anything bad about the Redshift post. And uh, based on my experience with the stems, I'm really not expecting there will be any. Were there any negatives? Well, there's only, only one I can think of. It affected my saddle position. And that's because the Redshift posts have very little seat post setback, you know, the offset. It's only seven millimeters. Now, 
that grows a little bit once you sit on it because as it sags, it ever so slightly moves backwards, depending upon how firm you have it set, of course, and how much you weigh and all that. So I probably ended up with twice that, maybe let's say seven and five, right? So at 12 millimeters offset, but I was used to 20. I was used to a 20 millimeter offset C post that Linsky tie. So I had to move my saddle all the way back in the rails. And I found actually that really wasn't enough. So I've been using the WTB Gravelier saddle. I really like that saddle, but it has a rather defined sweet spot where it kind of wants my butt to be. And if you move out of that, even by a few millimeters, I didn't like it as much. It was annoying. So the answer to that was to move to a saddle that had a little flatter profile to it that I still liked using. And that's the WTB Silverados. And I've used those for years. Um, and I had two of them, the classic version. They did just recently revise it ever so slightly, but I had two of them. I liked them. And since they're flatter, it gave me a little bit more leeway and grace to sit in different places on the saddle. Is it, is it ideal? No, I would still like to have more offset just because of my body geometry, what I've gotten used to over the years. That may not be your issue. Uh, if you run a more forward seat position or you have an offset seat post now, you're, you're good. If, however, you run an offset seat post, like a 20 millimeter post, and you've got your seat all the way back and that's what you need on the bike, well, you may not be able to get a redshift post or some of the other ones I've seen in a position where you want it to be. Now, after trying both posts, which one's for you? Or which one's for me, for that matter? Well, on the gravel bike, I'm gonna stay with the pro post because I found that it gives me it enough, enough bump compliance, enough um, taking out those big hits to where I'm fresher. It is enough for me. I don't need the extra 15 millimeters of give that the standard post does, even though, even though it is nicer to ride in that sense. It also is a little lighter and while it does, uh, you know, it makes the inner weight weenie in me feel a little bit better because it's my gravel bike, I don't want it to, I don't want to be compounding a whole lot of weight that I don't need to put on it. You know what I'm saying? So if the pro post is getting the job done and it is, I think I'm good. What should you do? Well, that's really up to you. I think if you're like me, if you just want something more than you've got now and you're a bit weight conscious and the uh, the cost offset doesn't bother you, Pro Post is a slam dunk. But I will say this, I think when you consider the reduced cost, the small weight gain, the tunability, and the extra width of that sweet spot that that post operates in, I think for most people, they will feel like they get more benefits out of the standard post that they imagined I would get when they buy and install a suspension seat post. Does that make sense? You might be slightly disappointed in the pro post, maybe if you don't know what you're getting into. So I think for most people, the standard shock stop seat post is probably the way to go. Now that leaves me with the regular seat post. What the heck am I gonna do with that? Well, I got a plan, because I got a bike build in the garage right now You've already seen part of it. I'm gonna be revealing more of that soon. I was waiting for parts and I just got a big box of parts today. And I think that is going to be super duper for the purposes of that build. And we'll talk about that more as things come along. Meanwhile, I tell you, I wish I'd done this a long time ago, but I think age and wisdom, you know, hopefully wisdom comes with age. Hopefully wisdom comes with body starting to be a whole lot less tolerant of getting beat on. And you know what? Thanks to Redshift for making a product that slow and old guys like me keep doing big rides and enjoying them by the end of the day. Thanks to Redshift again, sending out these two posts to me to, to review and to talk about. I hope if you're considering one that it'll help you make up your mind, decide which one to get. Give them a try. It is a great product. They're a great bunch of folks. Also, if you do decide to buy a Redshift post or a stem, I have an affiliate link down in the description of this video. Click on that and I'll take you to the Redshift site. They'll know and they'll appreciate the fact that I led you to them and it helps me out a little bit too financially. And you get a great product. 
All right, that's about it for now. It's an amazing day. It's like 75, a little breezy. I hope the, the wind isn't bad in the, in the recording. What an amazing day. It's starting to feel like spring here, Southern California. Tomorrow, I've got a big ride plan. I hope to film it. It's going to be what I call a big, stupid ride. Anyway, more on that later. You guys, as always, have a great week and or weekend, and go ride your bikes. So as I'm sitting there wrapping up that video, I'm like hearing this noise. I'm thinking, is that an airplane? Sonic boom? No, it's thunder. Look at that. Uh, I think I better get home before I get myself all wet. I couldn't resist. I'm still dry. It's looking sketchy though. See ya. Gotta go, gotta go. Gotta beat the raindrops. I made it. I made it. I didn't even get too wet. I'm being greeted by a cute little dog. Yes, yes, it's a good girl. Successful day.